So what's happening today? We're doing the bathroom today. We're doing it. We're not thinking about doing it. We're not starting to do it and then stopping. We are doing it. It's getting finished. That's it. If you're new to this channel, we're James and Sarah, also known as The Whole World or Nothing. We used to be full-time backpackers, exploring the world and writing about our travels in our blog. And then the world changed. We got repatriated from Peru and found ourselves back in the UK at a loose end. So we decided to do a van conversion. Make sure you hit subscribe now so you can join us in this series as we share the highs and many lows of converting an old Mercedes Sprinter panel van into our dream home on wheels. Unfortunately, that was wildly over-optimistic even by our standards, but we certainly made a start. To waterproof the bare shell of a bathroom, we used a three-stage waterproof tanking kit designed for wet rooms. So what's happening here then? I'm just putting the primer on. I'm putting a second coat on because it said for porous materials. Put two coats on. Um, there's plenty of it left over and uh, plywood is pretty porous in my experience from what we've been doing <laughs> with the painting and then you have to put like 19 coats on before <laughs> it even covers the wood. So yeah, I'm just whacking another coat on and then going to leave that to dry overnight. Mm -hmm. And then start the, <laughs> the next part of the uh, tanking kit which is the tape that goes in all the corners. Cool. But this stuff is so strange. It it's like the consistency of milk. Oh, right. not even. Oh, yeah. it's like, well, it looks like milk, but it's like the consistency of water. Oh, that's so strange. And another thing is, the instructions say to work upwards so yeah. you don't get drops coming down. But that doesn't make sense. It runs down, though. It runs down, obviously. I mean, I'm following the instructions still. I finally finished the um, this part of the tank in, which is the taping of the corners. And I've just sealed all of the corners. The the actual corners like these are double sealed, and then there's a single layer that goes all the way down. And then that bit in the middle there is just because there's a join in the wood, so I've sealed that up as well. I'm not going to lie, this took absolutely ages, it took a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, it's really fiddly stuff to work with and the problem is that it sticks to itself a lot so you have to kind of make sure that when you're pushing it into the edges that it's not sticking to um, any of the other parts of the tape that you're putting on. So it, it's just time consuming, it takes a while to actually get it right and you know get it into all the corners and then you have to roll it with a, a kind of um, former um, which again is, is not the easiest I mean the one that I had was was totally crap so the the bit kept dropping off which again made it a lot more difficult just before I started painting the rubber membrane on I remember that you have to put down this matting um, over where the drains are going to be and where the showers are going to be coming through is something that's provided with the kit as well it's just an extra bit of the tape but it's kind of like a, a much bigger size so I've just cut that in half that's roughly where the drains going to go we think and we're hoping to put the shower in there so I've done that and now it's definitely ready to start painting and here's what the first coat looked like Good morning, it's another cold one today so I've got the heater blowing in the background which you might be able to hear. I've let that first coat of the rubber that I put onto the bathroom dry overnight and it's looking pretty good. Here's what it looks like now. So you can kind of see the brush marks that's going uh, horizontally. The next layer that I'm going to be putting on is going to go vertically so hopefully the two will kind of overlap each other and mean that there's no water going to get through there. That is the idea anyway. So how's it going? It's looking very blue. It's going fine. It's toxic. So hard to be in there because the space is like really tiny, and these fumes coming off this stuff are serious. 
I didn't know how thick to put it on initially. Right. Because obviously I wanted to get two coats on, so I didn't want to run out. I thought I'd used about half the tub yesterday during the first coat, but it turns out there's a fair amount more. But one of the tutorials that I watched said that once you've got it on, that you can do your final strokes so that it's kind of like, uh, I guess, a complete layer. Right. So I'm just doing that now with the extra bit of um, stuff that I've got left. So it's already got a second layer on, but I'm right. going over it again. Okay, it is late. This is like, I don't know, the fifth or sixth time I've been out here this evening to check on this and move the heater around. But it is so cold that we're having to run this electric heater off the mains oh. to try and dry out the waterproof shower tanking kit that is going on in here it's looking okay though still a little bit soft basically it's just so cold that it's not curing like it needs to be i think it's at least 10 degrees in order for it to actually do what it needs to do um so yeah, we've just got this on a low heat so that it's just providing that little bit of extra warmth. I think it's doing okay. Big day today. Big day, laying the bathroom floor. We opted for a textured rubberized wet room floor in, but this stuff is really quite pricey. So we just bought an offcut to bring the cost down, which meant we had limited choice over the color and style. So ended up with this lovely piece. We already had a template from the piece of lino that we'd cut out of the bathroom, so we simply laid that on our beautiful piece of rubber flooring and went around it with a Stanley knife. That wasn't actually as difficult to cut as I thought it would be. No, we only used two blades. One blade? One blade, yeah. Both ends. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Pretty snug. Yeah? Yeah. A little bit too snug. Right. On the sides. So we're gonna have to trim a bit off? Yeah. Well that's better than being too small. Okay, it's in. Well, it's not glued down in, but it's cut to size in and it doesn't look too bad at all, even if I do say so myself. We used the same flooring adhesive that we'd used to secure the lino down and then pushed it outwards from the inside to make sure there were no air bubbles. For the walls and ceilings, we chose to use interlocking plastic waterproof panels. We've had an absolute disaster with these um, ceiling panels that we're putting on. I don't even want to touch them. <laughs> They're a lot more fragile than we first imagined, aren't they? Yeah. At first we got two panels cut. They fit pretty snugly and one of them had some sticky stuff on the back of it. I think it was where the tape had mm. come off. So we left them on the ceiling and we went out to cut the third panel and then we heard this crash. <laughs> and we came in and they're just shattered all over the floor basically. So we had to do all that again. And then we got all four of them cut. We were literally about to stick them in. A fly came in that Sarah didn't like the look of. So she got a bit fed up and opened the door, wafted it out and then dropped the final panel again. So that one smashed as well. And then, um, Whilst trying to recut it, Sarah actually cut her finger instead. <laughs> so, 
I had to take over. And at the fourth attempt, we finally got it right, but we just need to get them up. We need to get them stuck before they all just smash. I know. And we, we've not got that much more like stuff that we can cut it from either. We didn't leave ourselves very much leeway with this one. We ordered about what we need. <laughs> We've got a ceiling. We've got a ceiling and we've got a light. Before starting the walls, we secured trim around the doorway for the panels to fit into. It was pretty straightforward, if a little fiddly, to get the angles right. All right, so the trim is all in then. Looks great. How's it going? Going all right. Oh, you got the first wall in. One panel in. It's not actually in yet. <laughs> I mean, it's in place, but it's not stuck in. So. Oh, I get you, it's cut and in place, yeah. yeah. Looks great. You can see how it's gonna look. Starting to see how it's gonna look anyway. Can you? Yeah. It's going to look bigger in there as well, you know, because it won't be blue, it'll be white. So what's happening? Got some problems? Yeah, this is about the most difficult part of it, I think. <laughs> These two corners here. Yeah. Uh, and it's just because the, the shape of it is just crazy, the van curves so much. I think I've got the curve correct, but mm. I just think it's too large, so I have to keep nibbling little bits off and, oh, right. and keep trying it. But I've been going at it for about, I don't know, an hour. So you got it in, but got it stuck? I got it in, I got it stuck. The way that I got it in was by taking the second panel out, yeah. putting these two end panels together and then pushing it in. Mm. But I didn't actually think it would go in, and it went in, it kind of sucked itself in. <laughs> it, it scraped along the wall here, because uh, that bit's a little bit too tight. Right. And um, now I can't get it out. But I need to get them out because I need to put some silicone behind them. Oh. So I'm going to have to try and cut the bit that seems a little bit too big still, <laughs> whilst it's in position, and hope that it just pops out afterwards. But the thing is, this stuff's really fragile as well, so I can't just yank on it because I'm in danger of them breaking every piece that I've, that I've connected it to, so it's not a great situation really. Okay, so you ready to have another fight with the bathroom panels today? I'm not ready. <laughs> not ready at all. I've already had to talk you down. <laughs> yeah, well we're an hour in and I've, all I've done is literally stab my head in that room just looking at it, <laughs> wanting to kick it to bits, so should be a fun day. It is Friday the 13th actually. Just think how nice it'll be when you have your first shower in there. I'm going to hate it. <laughs> Why? I'm going to hate it. <laughs> absolutely resent it for the rest of my life I think. So you figured it out? Well, you figured it out. What would you do without me, eh? I'd kick it all to bits. <laughs> <laughs> what Sarah managed to figure out that I couldn't was the exact shape of this end panel using the good old-fashioned cardboard template. Once that was in, we were able to get the final wall stuck in. No mean feat in itself considering the curve of the wall. The last panel, as in the last panel that's going in the bathroom and the last panel that we actually have, so no pressure, yeah? Don't fuck it up. <laughs> it's already cracked at the end as well. Oh God.
We should probably point out here that these plastic panels aren't the easiest to work with. They're pretty easy to break and quite difficult to cut into irregular shapes. On a normal house bathroom they'd be quick and easy to install, but the angles we had to bend them into and the curves that we had to cut in them made it a longer and more difficult task than we'd ever imagined. What an absolute beep that was to get in. But it's in. It's in. You got silicon everywhere. <laughs> it's because it had to like curve in, but also curve that way at the same time. You can't like bend it in two directions at mm. the same time. <laughs> so I was having to like nibble a bit off. But it didn't need off, but it needed off to be able to bend to get in, if that makes sense. But it's in. And the gap isn't too big at all, so it's fine. Cool stuff. So that is bathroom done. Oh. Well, not quite. We've still got silicon all the edges. <laughs> and put the shower in. Yeah, and the drain. And the drain. <laughs> and the shower curtain. Uh. <laughs> To make sure it was absolutely watertight, we decided to do a really thick bead of silicon in the corners, another fiddly time consuming task. I think it's done. My knees are absolutely killing. <laughs> Could hardly stand up. I'm not surprised you've been kneading in that for about two days. <laughs> I feel like I slept in here. Yeah, I think it's sealed. Cool stuff, it's looking great. Obviously the steps still got to be done. Um, and this side here, but the actual inside of the shower. I think it's done mate. We haven't really filmed a great deal of the bathroom process because, well, there's been various reasons. <laughs> because I've nearly had a mental breakdown yeah, over the silicon. <laughs> both of us have been on the verge of mental breakdowns. I almost <laughs> cut my thumb off with a standing knife, which was fun. Yeah, that's and, um, really quite well. But the other reason is that it's, it's like quite a small space, so it's difficult to actually film. You can't get <laughs> a time lapse because it would be of nothing, um, really other than you know a specific spot in the bathroom mm. but we're getting there yeah i think it looks all right i'm not gonna lie i'd like it to be neater but that's just me you know and i don't think it can actually be neater because it's the first time i've done this kind of thing so it looks great you know so i wouldn't worry about that i'm just being picky about it and the most important thing is that it's waterproof actually like it like tidy but do you know what i mean like that is far more important than absolutely it looking perfect. It's all right. It's looking a lot smarter now with the silicon in, I think. Yes. Good morning. What are we doing today? We're doing the shower. <coughs> We're installing the shower. The actual shower? The actual shower. Yeah. That the water comes through. The water <laughs> won't come through it yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to pipe it up, but we're going to get it all set up on the wall. We're going to get the shower head actually hung so it should be looking quite nice by the end of the day, hopefully. So we're just making a mock-up of our shower wall with the plywood and the cladding, PVC cladding that is going to be going through so that we can put the shower on this bit first and test that it's all right before we start drilling holes in the actual shower wall, right? Exactly. <laughs> We've never done this before and we're not 100% sure exactly how it's all going to fit together because we've got a shower that we bought quite cheaply off Amazon and it doesn't come with any fixtures and fittings and we've got some fixtures and fittings from elsewhere which took quite a long time to find because we weren't exactly sure what we needed so we're going to put it all together in this mock-up first just to check that the idea that we've got the theory is correct and hopefully fingers crossed we can then do it straight away into the bathroom and get it perfect first time well, we have to because there's no second chances.
so this is why we do these mock-ups because <laughs> as you can see the first one wasn't right if we'd done that on the van then it would be really difficult to put right because these holes are actually too small for the um, bits that we need to fit through to fit through it wasn't something that we could have known beforehand because we didn't know that they needed to fit through if that makes any sense <laughs> uh, exactly. so if you were to then try and make a hole that big bigger it's really quite difficult to do so we've got the right size hole now we figured out how we're going to put it on they're actually bigger than the connectors the holes are bigger than the connectors so um, well you can see there's a bit of space around them but that doesn't matter because it's not the hole that's going to be holding the shower in place it's actually this piece of kit here so this is going to be fixed onto some wood along these points and that's going to keep everything in place meaning that the shower is not going to move at all once it's actually fixed onto that so now we need to figure out if we've got enough space between the wall and this bit of the um, shower fixing kit to fit our sink in. Just to explain that a little bit further, the setup of our shower came, the actual shower itself came with these S connectors, but in order to fix it in, we had to buy this shower fixing plate. And the reason for that is because we don't have a solid wall and we don't have solid pipes that will hold the shower in place. But before we mocked it up and tried it out, we didn't know whether it was this that had to fit through the wall or this that had to fit through the wall. So the initial attempt that we had was uh, that diameter, which is smaller than this diameter, which is why it didn't fit through. But the reason that um, we need this to fit through the wall is that the shower has to tighten on fully to this bit of thread. But the way that it was actually situated previously was slightly um, inside the wall which meant that the shower only had two or three bits of the thread to tighten onto and that meant that it was kind of rocking around a little bit so in order to push it further forwards and allow us to tighten the whole thing up we actually had to cut the hole bigger so that this would fit through and then um, yes yeah, allowed us to fix the shower on really securely because of how our wall is actually set up there's a couple of bits and pieces that we need to avoid but then on the other side we need to avoid going through the seam between the panels because that's probably like the most susceptible bit of the PVC panels. As in fragility wise? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's been a little bit complicated working out exactly where it can go because the, um, we basically we've got a vertical um, bit of wood in the stud wall that this is going through that we need to not drill through. So we can't just do it from the inside of the bathroom because we might hit that. But to do it from the outside, like I say, we don't want to go through the join in the PVC cladding. So trying to measure that, get it exactly right, uh, it's taken a little bit of time. And we're going to drill a pilot hole through from this side, from the outside of the bathroom. And then we're going to drill the other hole and the two larger holes through from the inside of the bathroom once we know that the pilot hole is in the right position. This is nerve wracking though, yeah, because it's, it's like one of the first things in the van where if this goes wrong, then that's the bathroom absolutely, <laughs> absolutely messed up. Yeah. We can't do anything with it. No pressure. No pressure. Come on, let's do it. This is the beam that we're talking about. So we have to have the shower either side of this and at this side, I'm not sure you can see it actually, but there's a seam here, which we need to miss. So we need it to come through either side of that as well. <laughs> yeah, ready, I'll go inside okay. and watch it coming through. Ready? Oh, ready. Nice and slow. No, oh, I missed it. <laughs> I was filming the wrong bit. There we go. Oh, well, it's in the right place at least, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's missed the, um, missed the scenes. Okay, and it's also, yeah, fine. That's actually perfect. Whew. Right, so there we've got it. Two holes, they're in. That's it. No going back now, that's where it's going.
Okay, so because this joint here between our fixing plate and the S connector is going to be inside of the wall, we need to make sure that that is as watertight as possible. We need to make sure that if a leak happens on that joint, that it doesn't just go in between the layers of our wall, which would be quite a big disaster. Obviously, with any joint, there's always a potential for a leak, so we just need to anticipate that that could happen either while we are plumbing it in or at some stage in the future. So we're just going to put silicon inside these holes. Um, we've done them a little bit bigger so that there's plenty of space for that. And that should hopefully keep that nice and watertight. While we wait for that to dry, probably leave it overnight actually to give it the maximum amount of drying time. We are going to crack on putting these walls in place that are going to be behind and at the side of the sink area. We'd actually had these ply panels cut and ready to go for months, but just weren't able to fix them on before getting the shower installed so it was a relief to get them on and finally cover up the last bit of vapour barrier. First job today, we're going to fix the shower in. I think the silicon's dried around the holes that it's going through. Yeah, it's nice and nice and dry. Good. So we're going to get that fixed in, fixed on, get the shower head put on and everything, and um, put that to bed. there you go. Do you like it? I like it. I really like it. It looks great. Um, I mean, it's in. <laughs> it's not piped in yet and there's no water in the van so we can't test it. So it might be leaking but it looks good. <laughs> Well, that's it for this week, dudes. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, bash that thumbs up button down below to let us know and join us in the comments for a chat. If you're new around here and enjoyed watching us suffering, why not subscribe and hit that little alarm bell too so you get notified every time we post a new video for your weekly dose of our pain. Next week, we're gonna be starting to put our water system together. And as always, if nothing else, it will be an ordeal. Catch you then.